Despite not having much, a woman decides to hand an envelope of money to a homeless young man she met on the street. Years later, her act of kindness returned to her. Leslie and Eric were a couple renting an apartment in a poor area of town. Leslie worked two jobs to afford rent and other expenses while Eric stayed home. Leslie didn't think much of Eric not working as he always said he was going in for interviews. I'm just not lucky enough, no one's hiring me, he said one day. The truth was he was just lazy and stayed in bed the entire time Leslie was out working. Leslie decided to treat Eric to a nice restaurant in a fancy neighborhood nearby on their second anniversary. We haven't eaten out in a good restaurant in ages, let's go out on a date, she told him. She prettied herself up for the occasion wearing makeup and a beautiful black dress she hadn't worn in a while. When they got to the restaurant, Eric couldn't stop shifting in his seat. This restaurant's way too expensive, we should have just eaten at a diner. Come on, we don't get to do this often, just enjoy it, Leslie encouraged him. Unfortunately, it didn't work. As they browsed through the menu, Eric kept blurting out comments. Leslie was beginning to feel upset. She'd worked hard to be able to treat Eric to the restaurant. She thought he'd enjoy it as he often spoke about restaurants in the fancy neighborhood. As they were leaving, things got worse when a homeless young man approached them. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. I'm sorry for bothering you, the man said. Do you have any money to spare? I don't have food or money and I'm all alone. Leslie's heart melted. The boy couldn't have been over 20 years old and he looked frail. Eric, let's help him, she said, tugging his arm. Eric shook his head. Why would we? After that meal, we might as well be begging in the streets too. The guy's a scammer, he said. Walking ahead of Leslie, who stayed behind and decided to talk to the boy. What happened to you, she asked. The young man revealed that his parents had died and he was all alone. He wasn't accepted into an orphanage anymore as he was nearing legality. Leslie didn't hesitate to open her bag and take out an envelope of money, but Eric saw this from afar and was furious. Are you kidding me? Don't hand our money to a stranger, that's for our rent! We don't have extra money and you know it, he screamed. Irritated at Eric's lack of compassion, Leslie shot back, This is my money and I can do with it as I please, I want to help him. You're unbelievable, I can't watch this, I'm leaving, he said, walking away ultimately. It was just Leslie and the young boy in the street, and while she initially wanted to give him some bills, she looked at him in the eye for a couple of seconds before sealing the envelope again. Take it, she said, handing him the entire envelope. The young man was shocked. How can I pay you back, he asked. Leslie shook her hand. You don't have to. Just pay it forward and help someone else in need when you can. You're an angel, ma'am. Thank you for this. I can now buy food and look for a space to stay. May I ask for your name, he asked. Leslie Meyer, she replied with a smile on her face. Several years passed and Leslie lived alone in a small house. She broke up with Eric, realizing she didn't want to be with a man like him. One morning, she heard a knock on her door. It was her landlord serving her an eviction notice, saying, Time's up, Leslie. You haven't paid rent in two months and I just can't take it anymore. You have until today to vacate the house or else we're going to court. Leslie's eyes started to fill with tears. You don't understand. I lost my job. I have nowhere to go, she cried. If you don't leave the house today, police will be involved. Do you want that? The landlord threatened. At that moment, a man in an expensive business suit appeared on Leslie's doorstep. No need to involve the police, the man said, taking off his sunglasses. This woman will be moving to her new home. Leslie looked at him, puzzled. The man looked familiar, but she couldn't pinpoint where she'd seen him. May I come in? The man asked her. Still staring at the man, she slowly nodded, making way for him to enter her house. As soon as he got in, he handed her an envelope. It was a land title, showing she now owned a mansion worth $2 million. Wait, it says this house is under Leslie Meyer. Why? I don't have any money to buy this house, she told the man and he smiled. When I was homeless, you handed me an envelope of money. It was more than enough and I was able to study because of what you gave me. I now work in IT and own several startups. It's all because of that push you gave me years back, the man revealed. Leslie was stunned and couldn't help but cover her mouth with that hand. Is it really you? I'm so glad to see you've made it, he nodded. I saw an online eviction notice for Leslie Meyer. I went straight here. I realized you needed help. The man handed Leslie his business card and she saw that his name was Darian James. Thank you, she cried. Thank you, Darian. I don't know how I can ever repay you. This is too much, she told him. Darian shook his head. Just pay it forward and help somebody in need, he said and smiled. Leslie moved into her new home and became friends with Darian. He lived next door and since they were both alone, they would often have meals together and celebrate the holidays together. 